Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief recap. Uh, happy uh, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, another week's gone by, middle of the summer. Oh, options expired. Daily brief recap. Yeah, look at that. Uh, happy uh, TGIF. Um, big uh, July contract expiry today, so I uh, get the feeling that uh, usually they do most of the business Thursdays, and then Friday it's all the retail people scrambling, going, oh, are my options going to expire? What happened? What happened? Um, you know, tomorrow morning um, for our advanced class, our level three class, we'll go look at how they finished off the VIX uh, options and then also uh, what the implications are for the coming week or two uh, based on new options expiry data to work with. So uh, probably keep your eyes peeled for that and site veterans, uh, probably a good idea to keep an eye on what their plan is. Uh, we've heard lots of talk from market pundits that they're thinking some sort of big apex event uh, pivot should come in here near through the end of this month. And also, too, uh, we had on uh, the Daily Brief today, uh, Stephen, one of our OGs, um, who is a big uh, harmonics fan. And uh, he was playing with um, you know, using harmonic patterns on volatility studies, uh, in particular ATR. Uh, to try and identify volatility pivots. Uh, fascinating conclusions. And interestingly enough, his uh, studies, also too, we had on Colin today. Uh, so we had a double dose of uh, guest host on the uh, Daily Brief. Super awesome broadcast today. And uh, his buddies and stuff are also looking for some big uh, volatility event coming up here in the not too distant future. And they're looking, uh, actually both of those guys were looking at uh, volatility studies on Bitcoin. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you guys have known, um, uh, well, I mean, everybody who's anybody who's trading Bitcoin has watched basically violently flat. Um, it feels as though we're coming into some sort of apex event here in the next week or two, uh, which, you know, I don't think anybody should be shocked at that. I'm hearing a lot of people expecting the end of July. That's when all the last stimulus package uh, stuff has been sent out. People are going to look at the stock market, see it's super high, and say, well, I don't think we should give out any more stimulus. We've already diluted the currency, blah, 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 blah. And then that maybe sets up some sort of insane showdown through August, September, as, uh, you know, we, you know, everybody's away on vacation right now, but I can tell you, once Labor Day comes, and people sort of come back to work. I've heard, uh, in fact, Stephen lives in uh, New York City. And he was saying right now, basically, the, street, the streets are empty. And it's very, uh, I think he was using the, um, I made a reference to some famous uh, movie, I Nomad or something like that. Um, so, you know, what happens in the fall? And then, of course, when the weather starts to get nasty again, does this flu bug uh, start to pick up a, 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 another head of steam? Oh, boy, get ready for the fall, people. It's going to be interesting times. Uh, for now, and actually this might even be the window over the next, say, two or three weeks where the breadth indicator can work its way back up into overbought, uh, I think I've talked recently, I am watching the inverse ETFs closely. Actually, a trade that I am trying to do now is to actually start accumulating um, put options on the Australian dollar. Um, and actually, I've got a number of different ways to attack this. We could have gotten a very fast, high leverage, power pack, sharpshooter sell signal here today. That doesn't look like it's come in, but I definitely like the TRI SOF kind of concept. And the numbers do start adding up. Um, so I have actually started to uh, try and accumulate a position in here. Um, but as for the broader stock indexes, I'm not quite ready to put a fork in them just yet. Um, so for your purposes, um, I like to uh, just sort of take a look at the big, you know, risk on, risk off proxies in the market. How are they doing? Should we have any sort of general message and then go and look at anything in particular? And you can see, obviously, we're enjoying a pretty uppy market here and some of the stuff I'm long. Um, so U.S. dollar and man, this is one hell of a fight going on here. Uh, U.S. dollar, I think, set a trap and it was fascinating how we came down against that trend line. Interesting, too, I have other U.S. dollar charts and we have this long term trend channel. 
um, that uh, basically we traded back down to the bottom of the channel and um, that was actually a bit of a confluence there yesterday so this channel goes back quite a ways um, that low that low and then what we just had there and that painted this as a midpoint which I think the market's been respecting and that's kind of that counter trend rally kind of thinking I think the market wants to work back up there but we might lose this channel and if that's the case then you know that opens up air down below um, and I think I told you the other day I thought it was fascinating how we have this little high to low trend line that high against this low uh, and the market was just walking its way down that and gee whiz look what happened two days ago so you can see uh, doink and what was interesting was this was all around an ECB press conference and I'm wondering whether the ECB itself is actually acting as a bit of a pivot here in the market kind of like buy the rumor uh, in this case sell the US dollar into that uh, euro conference event uh, and then uh, buy the news on the other side of it but wow one hell of a battle and the the war is still waging and I kind of thought that this is going to take probably the best part of a week or so to actually tell us whether this US dollar has actually bottomed and we're going to start working our way up if that's the case then I'm thinking you know this kind of action on the other side of this um, you know, probably something like that, take us right back up into these. And this would be like, oh boy, uh, things are getting out of control again. Um, so, jury's still out. Let's see what happens at this level. And of course, also too, it's the middle of the summer. So, you know, the pros are going to be kind of messing around with this market. Could this take a week or two to sort of play out into that July event? I think so. Um, so US dollar index down a big chunk all the world currencies rallying against it like I said I'm gonna try and buy some uh, some uh, Australian dollar put options um, and keep in mind these are like deferred right six month duration so not tomorrow this is like middle of September October or shits hitting the fan that's when these trades pay start paying off um, so, uh, you know, when I look at the stock indexes themselves, interesting to see this Russell 2000 versus the Dow way down here. It is stubbornly strong. And I've noticed this. The small cap Starks are very strong. Um, got a couple other stocks that are just getting really close to double levels again. Didn't really get any big wins off today, but uh, things are moving up, which I find fascinating stock big stock index is kind of just stuck right up at the top end of their range here um, and again you know our crazy little scenario with the oil just sort of sitting there I mean it's not really even moving much again I kind of think a lot of this has to do with the July options expiry notice everybody has just stopped on a dime um, once that event gets out of the way and there's some pretty big open interest in those options then I think we're probably going to see a bit more movement in the week, next week or two and frankly speaking anybody who's got a crystal ball uh, you want to let me know which way this is going to resolve it's anybody's guess every single market here is setting up tight little ranges something about is about to hit the fan here uh, it might be a big bull wave US dollar might crap out here botters are kicking ass um, and the whole fucking risk market just goes into super orgy mode. You don't know. Uh, like I've told you guys before, don't get into the habit of, you know, making predictions. You know, trade your setups. Uh, and just live with the results. So sideways, 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 sideways. Well, that was a fun report. Sideways. <laughs> Now, in that environment, are, is there money to be made? Uh, I thought this is a cute one. It's just, I mean, we go through the list and we sort of say, what well, do we want to talk about this one? Do we want to talk about that one? Do we want to talk about this one? This is a fun one just because I tweeted it out recently. Just a really good example. I mean, you tell me, has this thing got any room to move up here? I mean, just look at that chart. <laughs> the chart speaks for itself. Um, the trade itself, there's a number of different ways to approach trading, right? Are you a trader or are you a position trader? Or are you a swing trader or whatever? Um, but, the, you know, there's a kind of a cute story in that you could, you know, uh, skin this cat a number of different ways. Like I said, 
Little old ladies, uh, position traders, good fundamentals, pretty good story. Do you want to just stay in this thing and hold on to like 10, 15, 20 dollars a share? There's nothing actually wrong with that thinking. Uh, and you know, I think the story reads pretty well. They're basically in the rat extermination business through sort of like sterilization measures. And they got a big uh, working contract with the city of Washington, D.C. I mean, doesn't that, I mean, it's it's poetry. <laughs> you know, when the major media outlets pick up on this story, they're going to love this. <laughs> but uh, you could also, you know, I'm a trader brand. I'm here to make money from trading. I don't want to be stuck in a bag holding kind of bullshit, right? Uh, this is sort of the bot kind of thinking. So he could have looked at this chart uh, last week and said, well, you know, um, I'm seeing pretty good looking base. I'm seeing I can front run the bot level, sneak my way in. Um, and I'll look to take profits at uh, 307, which, you know, from 218, that's what, 20, 30% return on your money? Perfectly fine. Um, so, you know, it's just a great illustration that there's many different ways to skin the cat. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this thing. Um, I'll let you know as we go. <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, absolute worst case scenario here since we've had move stop to a trailing level hit on our trader setup. If I do see any sort of signs of market structure failure, I might just hop off. But really, this thing's got a head of steam behind it. You can see the volume spike. You can see momentum's just rocking and rolling. Willie's not even close to stupid here. So, I mean, I'm just going to let this thing run. And it's just such a good anecdote of this market. I mean, if this is a bear market, why are these W's coming in? Why is momentum looking like this? I mean, this is a this is a bullish looking chart. And if you had bought that W yesterday, I mentioned this in the lounge, yeah, you'd be making money from trading, doing your thing. Kind of fun stories. This is the way I like to play the market. Uh, this is one of Kevin's uh, warrants, and it was zipping up here at 20 some odd cents. And I was like, all right, I'll throw in a bit at a time. So I got filled yesterday. I, interesting enough, any kind of counter trend rally back up into these gaps and I can get a double off and get a free position. So that's kind of a fun, different angle. I mean, it's an interesting market. I don't really want to load too much up on the long side, but I'll tell you, there's some really interesting stocks. Look at this little eyes. I mean, everybody should look at that chart. I mean, I, I remember this was our fun story from back in the winter. We bought the warrant, sold them doubles, triples, whatever. And now we're just sitting here doing nothing. But I look at this and I go, geez, I, I really want to go and buy this damn thing. I mean, look at these W's. So look at the volume. Look at the momentum. I, I, what letter of the alphabet do you see here? I mean, I see a big honking W. So, uh, you know, 50% rules, probably, stock's probably good for a pop-up into here. And, of course, you know, zoom out on this thing. What do you think? If these guys get their act together, is there any kind of money to be made here? So, it's just, again, you can go case by case by case. I, You know, the broader markets, this is this fucking hurry up and flat and drive you crazy. But if you can go case by case by case and find individual stories, what's the fundamental driver? Chart looks good. Uh, fundamentals look good. I mean, you can probably make some money from trading here. So that's sort of what I'm seeing in the market from a broader perspective. Look at some of these stocks. Look at that NBEV. I mean, this thing just, it's ready to go. Somebody just has to say, all right, it's your turn, and this thing's going to take off here. Um... I mean, I, I could just go stock after stock after stock. So, you know, I do see that uh, we are here 15th, uh, 17th, beg your pardon. A uh, lot of people talking about tops coming in around the end of the month. We might have a nice little two-week rally window here where little things like this can perk up and uh, pay you uh, nicely for your efforts. But, uh, you know, on balance, let's all understand what time of year it is. Don't fall in love with anything. You know, the old expression in the uh, market is trade it, don't date it. So uh, if you can live by those kind of uh, thinking, um, those kind of mantras, uh, I think there's some money to be made here. Uh, and the interesting thing is I think it's the same message in crypto too, eh? Um, so, you know, stock market, uh, and look at that chart. I mean, it's just beautiful. Uh, my job right now, ironically enough, is just don't get in the way of this thing. Um, 
Same, I think the same message in crypto too, to a certain degree. And I very much like the stocks are kind of parked. I think Bitcoin to all intents and purposes is parked. Um, as I had said, we've had a few people on the site come up with some interesting volatility studies suggesting uh, end of this month, we'll probably see some sort of volatility injection. Interesting how this wedge comes to a peak right there, July 30th. So I don't know whether I'm really expecting a lot of sort of violent moves outside of this, uh, this triangle, for lack of a better term. Um, also, too, I noticed, and I was sort of saying like to the community earlier today, yes, market is pointing down, but in good old Bitcoin fashion of late, it seems completely appropriate. These sort of swing trader people have been given another divergence message. Remember, think violently flat. So, bull div, bears better cool their jets. And, well, they're well served. Another bull div right here. Better bears, they better cool their jets. Well, well, it's probably a smart idea. Even a little bull div in here. If you're bearish, you better cool your jets. Well, look what's happening again. So, uh, this just needs a little pop up here. And you can see cute little W, cute little W, cute little W. Could this thing rally up? In fact, the Dabo rules, I think, if I'm not mistaken, but. Uh, Dav, I suppose if you watch this later on, you can always chime in on how your setup works. Uh, but um, I think it's something along the lines of... Uh, there's the W in price. I think it's best to try and go in off candle body levels. And you can see that would have been filled last bar. But hey, let's give you a fill there. And uh, we're going to risk against the W. I don't really like this trade, but hey, what the hell? Trader's got a trade. And I think Dab's rule is he wants to shoot for two to one, which would make sense, right? If we just do a nice little reload zone. Notice that will basically take us up to 78.6. And you can see there's also a nice little trend line confluence. Maybe we've got a spike up into here. And also look on the profile too, right? You can see there's a shelf right here. I find it hard to believe that we're going to see too much movement above here. So uh, W's coming in on the momentum indicators. W's in price. My hunch is they're probably doing something like this. But who knows? Eh, keep your eyes peeled. Um, is this a trade I would take? No. Not even the slightest bit interested. Um, as it stands, I think, you know, just sort of finish off our conversation here. To me, this, you know, just very much like this funny little stock, you know, major index is not really doing anything in stock market. You can get doubles off if you find fun little stocks that have stories. Same thing in crypto. And I got to tell you, this is a perfect example of exactly what I was talking about over the past, say, two or three months, where, you know, Bitcoin, you know, and actually, really, I think over this, I've been saying this message over the past six months. Uh, Bitcoin's Bitcoin, you know, gotta love it. I don't think Bitcoin's going anywhere. I think it's uh, very institutionalized and uh, has tons of derivatives, so now it's probably locked into place until they decide to reprice the asset. I don't think that's today, and I think we'll get lots of momentum and volume confirmation when that is about to happen. So just be patient and wait for it. But uh, are there other stories that can make you money while you're waiting for Bitcoin to do its thing? And I got to tell you, man, this is this is a really good analogy that uh, that last cycle, uh, I just, you know, I, I started with like 500 bucks and threw in like, you know, 0 0.05 BTC, 0 0.01 BTC, that kind of stuff in the names. And as soon as they double, sell half, get the capital back. This is a name that actually I was able to do like several cars on, like three or four different cars through that last blow off top cycle. And so as a result, you know, for a bunch of free coins sitting on the books and you just, I, I publicly said this, like I got like hundreds of these coins, but I don't know who's going to be ultimately the big winner. And really half of my job is just don't get in their way. Let's just let them tell us who the big winner is going to be. And it turns out that this RLC is is one of the big winners. And a position that was basically the same size as all the others now has grown into my largest altcoin position. 
I don't know why. It's just, <laughs> you look at the price chart. You get a whole bunch of free cars and the damn thing goes crazy. Well, you know. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see where this thing goes. You know, ironically enough, me and my crazy fractal theory, believe it or not, I don't see any reason why this massive W has now been confirmed. So if this fractal is for real, then I have to honestly be thinking about, let's see, where should I be thinking? Wow. So, uh, you know, this is exactly like we talked about with Link, right? I mean, you could do uh, Amanda's Penthouse kind of fun conversations. Um, and so that would be things like extensions. So uh, look at that, we're coming right up. And interesting, Link ran up into 200% just stopped on a dime. I don't know whether Link can continue. Um, that's not the purpose of this conversation. The purpose of this conversation is just simply show you that half of your job, and this is the way that I took 500 and turned it into hundreds of thousands, don't decide where the tops are on any of these things. Just let the market do its thing. Get yourself into a free position and just let the market take over. I have no idea where the hell this damn thing's going. Might go to the moon. Moon, moon, moon! If it does, I can tell you, I got a shitload of coins on the books to uh, spoon feed you all when it gets there. So, uh, slow and steady wins the race. It's kind of a fun story. Obviously, uh, you know, <laughs> how's Brian feeling? Do you think Brian's relatively happy camper? This is my largest altcoin position <laughs> by far. And it's having a pretty good day. So, you know, go figure. Rinse and repeat. Slow and steady wins the race. Just let your capital work for you. Get yourself into good positions. Try to get the risk down as low as possible. I zero is even best. And then just <laughs> sit back and watch the fireworks. Because you never know what the hell's going to happen in this crazy world. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. PMA for the win. I suppose we'll see a bunch of you for the broiler chickens on uh, on Sunday. All the best, and bye for now.